Okay, tonight's video is on page five in the packet. It talks about number systems. And we're going to be um, answering these questions in class tomorrow, 1, 3, 8, 10, 12. In another practice book, this is another version of a practice book that you're gonna see here in the video. So, use a number line to add negative five and seven. So you start at zero, you go to negative five, um, and then adding seven would be, adding seven would go to the positive um, direction, which means you would go to the right. So that would get you out here to positive two. So negative five and seven equals positive two. Example two, use a number line to subtract negative six minus negative four. So again, you start at zero, and I have a number line drawn on here. You go over to negative six, Subtracting a negative, subtracting a positive, you would go to the left. Subtracting a negative, you would go four to the right. So that answer would be negative two because negative six is the same problem as adding negative six with positive four. Keep add the opposite, that's what we used to call it, keep add the opposite. Negative six plus positive four, different sign subtract, so you would subtract these, and yes, you would get two and take the sign of the larger absolute value, so you would get the answer as negative two. So how to do it on a number line and how to do it with our integer rules. Use a number line to illustrate seven take away four. So here's math that we used to do in first grade, seven take away four. So we go over to seven, we count over to seven, we take away four, and that would get us at three. Use a number line to show seven plus negative four. So I'm gonna do the same number line. I'm gonna go over to seven, using a different color, plus negative four, adding a negative. Adding a positive, I would go to the right, but I'm not adding a positive. Adding a negative, I'm gonna to go to the left. So going to the left four would get me again to my positive three. So seven minus four equals positive three, and seven plus negative four also equals positive three. So I'm getting the same answer um, doing it as a subtraction problem and adding the opposite because yes, is this equation true that all for all numbers P, subtracting P minus Q is the same thing as adding P and negative Q, adding the opposite. That's the subtraction rule, change it to add the opposite. I'm going to skip example four here and go on to, um, you should be able to do multiplication and division of integers and understanding that if a fraction has a negative in it, that that fraction can have the negative in the numerator, it can have the negative in the denominator, or it can have the negative out front of that fraction. So they all mean the same thing. So which of the following fractions is equivalent to negative four-fifths? Well, yes, four divided by negative five, that's equivalent, they are the same thing. I can put the negative either in the numerator or the denominator, so they're equivalent. Um, multiplying or dividing this by four, finding the equivalent fraction, dividing both parts by four, I'm gonna get negative four over five. So doing the simplifying. So here's my rule for why does this work, simplify. So if I simplify, B works, but C shows you a negative four divided by a negative five, and our rules and integers say a negative divided by a negative. This is equal to positive four fifths, not negative four fifths. So this is not equivalent. So A and B are both equivalent, but C is not. I'm on page five if you want to follow along. Um, the next table shows multiplying, uh, the rules for multiplying integers. It's the same rule for dividing. You can uh, read that on your own time. I'm going to go down to the long division question here on page six. Using long division from elementary school, students understand the difference between terminating and repeating decimals. Um, so say you were giving the fraction 3 eighths, 
could you take that fraction and identify whether it's going to terminate or repeat? Well, do the long division. 3 divided by 8. 3 divided by 8, well, three, 8 doesn't go into 3, but it does go into 30. And x, you can put your 0 on, put your, bring your decimal point up into your quotient. 8 goes into 30 3 times, that's 24. When you subtract, you get 6. And x is 0, you get 60. 8 goes into 67 times. So yes, they're going to ask you to do long division on the state test. When you subtract, you get 4. And x is 0, that's 40. 8 goes into 45 times. So 3 eighths is equivalent to the, um, re to the terminating decimal, 375 thousandths. It ends. I get 8 times 5 is 40. When, my, when I subtract and my remainder is 0, I have a terminating decimal. So you have to know that for the state test. How do you know if something repeats? Well, I happen to know that 1 6 repeats. What's 1 divided by 6? And they may ask you to do some repeating work on your state test. So 1 has a decimal at the end of it, and x is 0. 6 goes into 10 one time. When you subtract, you get 4, and x is 0, and bring it down. 6 goes into 46 times, you get 36. Subtracting, you get 4, and x is 0, bring it down. 6 goes into 46 times, is 36. And now I can see that this has been repeating here. When I subtract, I get 4. And every time I do this, I'm going to put it in six times, and it's going to keep giving me four as a remainder. So this answer will not terminate. It will not end. It's decimal point one, six hundredths repetent, that repeating six. So I'm going to use bar notation to show that that's a repeating six. So you may have to show some decimal, um, some fraction to decimal work showing whether it's a terminating, it ends, or a repeating decimal. So on page next page, um, it shows using order of operations. Can you solve all rational operations? So I see in this hard bracket a couple different operations here. I see multiplying, negative 10 times negative 9 tenths minus negative 10 times positive 11 hundredths. So I have multiplying, subtracting, and multiplying. Well, order of operations means that I'm going to multiply before I subtract. So I have two multiplyings. Negative 10 times negative 9 tenths. A negative times a negative is going to give me a positive answer there. And my positive answer, when you multiply a decimal times 10, it's going to move it one place to the right. So I know that negative 10 times negative 9 tenths is the whole number positive 9. And if you don't know that, come off to the side, 9 tenths times 10. Yes, you bring down the 0, 1 times 9 is 9. You have one decimal in your product, so put one decimal in your answer and you can see it's the whole number 9. So that product is 9, subtracting. Now the second product here, Negative 10 times a positive 11 hundredths is going to give me a negative answer. One negative in my product is negative. And I move that decimal over one place to the right. And I get this answer is negative 1 and 1 tenth. So I have positive 9 minus negative 1 and 1 tenth. Well, we should probably put that in parentheses. So I'm going to change this problem to add the opposite. And it's going to be adding positive 1 and 1 tenth to positive 9. So if you need to come off to the side and line up those decimal points, you're going to see that this answer, final answer, is 10 and 1 tenth. I'm going to add um, an, another example on here because you're going to see. So let's just call it example 1a. You're going to see uh, multiplication of mixed numbers. And of course, there's going to be a very obvious wrong answer on there for multiple choice. And it's going to say 6 and 3 twentieths, which some of you think is the correct work to do. Multiply the whole numbers, multiply the fractions. No, 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 no. 
You can only multiply fractions. So mixed numbers have to be changed to their equivalent fraction. 3 and 1 fifth is 16 fifths. 2 and 3 fourths is 11 fourths. So yes, I can cross cancel my 4 into my 16. And I get 4 times 11 is 44. And 5 times 1 is 5. This is not a rational number problem. This is a fraction problem. So I'm not going to leave it. And they probably won't have that option 44 fifths. They may, however, but more than likely they're going to, because it's just a fraction. It's not a word problem. It's not a ratio. It's just multiplying mixed numbers. They're going to ask you to reduce this to how many times does 5 go into 44? 8 times with 4 fifths left over and changing that to the proper mixed number of 8 and 4 fifths. So you may see mixed number multiplication in a book 1 or book 2. Jim's cell phone bill is automatically deducting $32 from his bank account every month. There are 12 months in a year. How much would be the total deductions be for that year? So I'm just going to take that $32 and multiply it by 12. They're going to deduct it out, so it's going to be coming out of your account. Well, pretty easy problem. 32 times 12. Well, you get 4, 6, carry to 0, 1 times 2, 3, and when you add this up, you get 384. So they're going to deduct $384, or they're going to be subtracting $384 from the account. They may ask you another part on this, like say the account originally started with $600. Take out the total deductions for the year, so you would subtract, because deducting something would be a subtraction problem, and you'd get $216 would be left in the account. That might be like a Part B kind of question. Um, so deductions are taken out. It's like taking money out of your account. It took a submarine 20 seconds to drop 100 feet below sea level. So you have your, you know, your submarine with the little telescope thing on it up here. And it's going down, right? It's going down to the ocean floor. And it's dropping 100 feet, taking its time at 20 seconds. What was the rate of descent? And the rate of descent is feet per second. It's not second per feet. It's feet per second. So it's 100 feet per 20 seconds. Well, the rate means the rate of descent. What is it in one second? How fast does it go down in one second? So you've got to do this division or make this equivalent fraction. 100 divided by 20 is 5 feet per second. Or you could write it out like this. 5 feet slash per second. Or you could make the, if you don't want to do the division, you could say, oh, well, what is this if this was a 1 second, the unit rate? Well, 20 divided by 20 gives me 1, so 100 divided by 20 would give me 5. You're still going to end up doing that division anyway. So you could do it equivalent fraction way or just dividing. So that submarine's going down at, a, at 100 feet in 20 seconds, which is equivalent to five feet in one second. Um, um, I want to put another uh, couple questions uh, in here, but I'm going to add them on at the bottom here. So a newspaper reports these changes in the price of a stock over four days. What is the average daily change? And I know that you know that average means add all the items up and divide by how many? Well, there's four fractions. I've got to add these four fractions, and thank goodness, they all have the common denominator of eighths. So I'm going to add them as one eighth and negative five eighths and negative nine eighths. I'm going to put all my negatives together first and then add on last my three eighths. You don't have to do it this way. You could just go right across and add them. But I know that this is negative 15 because negative one and negative nine and negative five is negative 15 eighths plus three eighths. My positive 1, different signs subtract. I'm going to get negative 12 eighths. Now I'm going to have to divide that by 4 days. Negative 12 eighths divided by 4. Well, they want to know, do you know how to divide fractions? Yes, we do. Negative 12 eighths times 
the reciprocal multiply by the multiplicative inverse, one fourth. Four goes into 12 three times, and you get, because this is just one, you get negative three eighths. So the average that the stock went down, actually, was negative three eighths each, each of those four days. That's the average. Here's a couple more um, number system kind of things, and it has to do with binomials. And find some white space on your paper here to add these on. So here's a sum question. And it might ask you to sum these binomials. So add these on. 2x minus 5y and x plus y. So sum these binomials, and they may or may not be in parentheses. So 2x and x, if I'm summing, that means to add. So my like terms, 2x plus x, those are both positive, add them together, you get 3x. Negative 5y plus positive y, different signs, subtract, negative 5 and positive 1y would give me negative 4y's. So there's a sum. You have to know that the word sum means add. They might ask you to find the difference of a couple binomials. So it may say difference. So again, add this one on. What is the difference in these binomials? So it could be 7x minus 5 is the first one. And the second one is 3x minus 2. 7x minus positive 3x's. 7x minus 3x, that's 4x. Negative 5 minus negative 2. That's negative 5 minus negative 2. Well, my rules for subtracting integer says keep, add the opposite. So it's negative 5 plus positive 2 different signs, subtract, negative 5 and 2 makes negative 3. Subtract these, 5 take away 2 is 3, take the sign of the larger absolute value, so it's going to be negative 3. So difference means you've got to take the difference of both of those, and you've got to remember to do minus negative 2. Another way that you may do this is, and, I, and this is the way I do it, when I see a negative in front of a parentheses, and it's a binomial problem. I'm like, oh, I'm going to distribute a negative 1 to this. This is how I do it. Negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Now I can put my like things together. 7x is a negative 3x. It's 7x minus 3x, 4x. Negative 5 and a positive 2 combine, different sign subtract, to give me negative 3. So my final answer is 4x negative 3 or 4x minus 3. Um, and the last one could be to distribute. It could be a distributing problem with binomials. Distribute, whoop, distribute. So it could look something like this. 2 times the quantity 3n minus 4 minus 2 times the quantity n minus 2. And again, you would have to multiply or distribute first. 2 times 3n's, 6n's. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Negative 2 times n is negative 2n. And negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So you're multiplying and distributing first. So this is a multiplying and now combining like terms. 6n's and negative 2n's gives me 4n's. Negative 8 and positive 4, different signs, subtract. So 8 take away 4 is 4. Take the sign of the larger absolute value. So the final answer there would be 4n minus 4. So be ready for some binomial operation in your number system questions. It could be a adding or sum question. It could be a difference or subtract, which kind of looks like a distributing negative 1 question. Or it could be just a distributing question that also has distributing and combining like terms. So those are also number system kind of questions.